Alright, I've uh, pretty much finalized the uh, targeting system. Uh, there's a few tweaks to make still, but I'll make them as I need them. Um, basically, I finally got tab targeting working. And, uh, you know, I have a hotkey to untarget if I absolutely want to. And you'll notice that it will ignore targets that I've already targeted. And obviously the same functionality still works of you know breaking line of sight from enemies. Um, all the same bells and whistles that were in there before. Uh, you, know, you can do radio lock. Um, all that. So it um, works pretty well. So the main changes. Um, it really didn't end up being anywhere near as complicated as I was making it to be. Uh, I'll go ahead and show some of the time that I wasted. Um, yeah, I made a pretty complex system. I had to snip a bunch of wires out of things and stuff, uh, especially these types of uh, you know events and all that, in order to get it to compile correctly. Um, you know, because I pretty much removed this, but I wanted to kind of hang on to it. Um, yeah, I made a, a pretty obnoxiously complicated system for um, more or less creating a big index of who you've targeted and then comparing it. And, you know, it was coming in and doing another radial check and, you know, seeing if there were new targets in the list and comparing those and then filtering through, which this never seemed to work correctly. I needed it to run like two or three times or something because the sorting arrays, removing, adding, you know, all that. It was just getting really messy and complicated and I realized that this would have been nice to make a system like this if I was only using one like method for targeting. So I went back to the drawing board and um, I can find it. And I found that <laughs> it was making it way, way harder than it needed to be. So um, first things first, in the begin play, you know, I created a, a variable, you know, recent targets list. In the the way this works is, well, I'll explain it as I get to it. But I clear the array, you know, just to make sure there is nothing saved. And um, then I add, you know, to that recent list, I add the, the player character because that's you'll see why in a minute. So then. Um, and I do need to fix one. No, I already fixed it. Um, so, you know, the same functionality. If I you know, zoomed in, the line trace lock will override everything. Um, if I'm not, well, I added in the sequence here. So it'll, essentially what it does is, okay, I've already got a target locked. It'll immediately fire and untarget everything. Then it'll come back in and it'll loop through the main targeting branch again. So in here, you can ignore that. I don't really need that in there. I just kind of have it in there or had it in there for testing purposes. So what you notice here is on the check for you know objects or actors you know in the vicinity in within the the radius here. I have this here instead, a recent targets list. So everything else is exactly the same, but where I would output to pick my target, I added this in right here, which just basically adds, you know, to the recent targets list, it adds whatever target I picked, right? So if I picked, you know, whatever target comes through here, and it'll add that, that indice um, into the array. And you know, I did that for each of these. They're all the same. So there, you know, recent targets list on the uh, the search or the trace, 
and then added this in here. Uh, and then for you know radial, um, it's the same ordeal. You got this right here because before it was just ignoring self and so now that that's there, hang on, I am got lost. All right, here we go. Same ordeal right there. It adds it to the list. So, and then, you know, just because I wanted it there, um, if you run out of targets to select, it'll clear your selection and uh, yeah, I, I can change this later, but it just works for now. So then what it does is when you know you lock onto your target, it'll come in here and fire off the sequence, which means it'll immediately go in and lock and you know start doing the rest of the stuff like changing the camera and setting your rotation and all that. And then after that it comes in here and it'll start a delay. Now this could be a regular delay or a retriggerable delay. And keep in mind that's you know crisscrossed, it's looping back on itself to kind of keep itself refiring. Um, so after you know a time interval, which I should promote this to an actual variable, it'll come in here, it'll run a quick branch, and if you notice, it'll check for do we have greater than two targets here. So the main reason for that is that the player character is always going to be index zero. So when you know when that got established here, it'll always be player zero or um, index item zero um, or the first index, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, so if this were set to let's say one, right, an index length of one. And this would glitch out because an index length of one would cause it to to untarget your current target that you have. So you don't want it to do that. You want it to, uh, you know, do the next target. So you, you target one character and then you target another one. Well, you want it to forget about the first one eventually, not the one that you're currently on. So you set that to two, and then it'll go through and it'll remove index number one, which is the second item in the index, if you're looking at length. Um, it'll remove it, because zero would be the player character. And it'll only do that if this length is um, you know, greater than two. So um, that will basically allow you to uh, target something and then when you target something else if you pay attention you'll see it says that it forgot an old target right that's just there to you know debug it and tell you hey you did something there and after three seconds boom it forgot that target and after three seconds it'll forget that target so I can still come in here and target this one now because he's been forgotten and then I could immediately you know do that so there you have it a fancy targeting system that is uh, miles better than what you usually end up seeing in a lot of games and I mean I'm not you know toot my own horn here but I, I definitely think that if people would spend more time working on basics like this that they you know rather than brushing straight into oh hey let's make all kinds of fancy stuff and explosions and um, but rather you know spending time on the core basics of the engine and getting all of this fully functional first you know your controls your UI your everything then you go in and start adding stuff because it's easy to control your assets and stuff to fit within performance if your engine's already made. So, uh, but that's that. So, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, take care.